Cowabunga dudes, it's Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage once again. And today we're going to hit the beach once more as we paint the undercarriage and the radiator on our Go Mad Nomad and even do the suspension in it. So won't that be fun? I'd like to think so. Well, of course, because I'm building the model. So without further ado, uh, let's join the Papa Dan and Colonel Rebs 2022 deformed cartoon model group build as we carry on with our go mad nomad so let's go down to the bench and check that out now here we have two parts that i've already cleaned up in the past now unfortunately i'm not starting this kit as a brand new thing but i have done a few little bits here and there so here we have the chassis and as you can see you've got the oil pan for your engine and the transmission here and then the drive shaft the differential and the rear relief springs molded in. All these holes are for the chrome front end. And then there's like this little funny uh, L-shaped T thing sitting right there at the front of the chassis. And that's actually for the back of the radiator. So this would go in here and here uh, with a little bit of glue. So it says to paint the radiator with a gloss black, but I've got semi-gloss black, which is more, uh, I'd say accurate to the radiators for sure. And then we've got the chassis, which is, they recommend painting it flat black. So I would paint the chassis flat black and then paint the springs in the differential here semi-gloss black and the fuel cell in the back with some silver. And then up here you got your aluminum transmission. This could also possibly be red. You could uh, use bare metal foil on the oil pan or paint the whole thing red like a Chevy engine. Now, if you're having trouble with your paint sticking, I've tried uh, this in the past. This is Elmer spray adhe adhesive, and you just spray it on and then paint your paint over the top. No, okay, I'm joking, don't do that. <laughs> you, hey you, in the corner, I see you picking up a can of this. Put it down, put it down. I was only kidding. This stuff is actually for gluing like foam core and whatever together. It's not for pre-painting, so <laughs> I was only kidding. No, but what I will do is I will use some of this masking tape to tape these down to cardboard boxes so that I can uh, spray on top of the cardboard boxes and just have something that holds them all down. So what I would do is take off a piece like this, rip it off, and then I loop it on top of itself like so. And then I grab one of the boxes. Now what I do is I put this across the back. So basically with this chassis I've removed all the seam lines and cleaned up what I could. So there that's what it would be like with the tape. So now I'm just going to stick this to the box. So it would go like this. So I'm pushing the tape down to the box top making it nice and flat and then I can put that there. Now luckily I don't have to spray in any special way up underneath. And you want to clean the uh, the model parts with soap and water for sure, so that they'll stick. Now the radiator, I was going to tape it to a box, but I think I can use those alligator clamps that I have, uh, basically the reverse clothes peg, and just peg it in like this using the reverse clothes peg, and then I'd be able to hold onto this and spray it with the uh, semi-gloss black, and to be able to move it into the back here. So remember, do not use this. I was only kidding, but uh, yeah, definitely use something to hold your parts with. You know, though, if the world was a cartoon, you probably could get away with putting this on first and then spray painting it with your color. But it's not, so don't do it! Okay, so here I'm back. I've painted the undercarriage with flat black. Now, this is just right after I sprayed this. So it's already starting to sort of fog up a little bit which means that it's going from being like a glossy black, which is straight out of the can. It's now starting to flatten up very slowly. So I'm going to leave this for about 24 hours. I'm going to put it in my... Uh, I've got a car outside that's nice and warm. It's uh, basically a derelict, but it does the job as being a little bake oven <laughs> in the summer. And then I've painted the radiator here with a uh, semi-gloss black. And, of course, that will come up sort of looking like the correct uh, GM stuff. Not too glossy, not too shiny. Now, I was joking about the spray adhesive, 
but this is something that you can actually use that does help. This is Poly S Plastic Prep. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually still being made, but you can see what it says here. Pre-painting cleansing agent for plastic surfaces, removes mold release, silicone, grease, etc., makes plastic static and dust-free. So if you can find this in your hobby shop, I'd recommend picking it up. Now you can see my finger got painted here a little bit. That's from the uh, cap of the spray cans. I'm using some uh, trim clad flat black and semi-gloss black paint. So I'll let this uh, dry up and we can actually work on the chrome components. So now that the frame and radiator are actually drying, I'm going to start working on these wheels. As you can see, there's a lot of flash and there's also those little points on here where this part was uh, hooked up to the parts tree and I had to clip it off. So I've got my cordless drill here and I'm actually going to put the wheel hub into the drill and just carefully tighten that up. I also have my file here and a piece of sandpaper. So what I'll do is just turn this on and run the file along the edge. My battery is low on the drill. And I'm just going to go until those little bumps are actually filed off. Whoops. Well, that was an interesting surprise. Okay. The wheel's got a bit of a taper on it. Okay, so now I'll just use that fine sandpaper. And there you go, the wheel back is now nice and clean. I'll also take my hobby knife and just sort of clear up anything along that edge. And then I'll also use the hobby knife just to scrape the chrome off here and round it a little bit like that. And once that's rounded, I'll just run the sandpaper just around there to make it nice and smooth. And then here are the other three wheels, just so you can see what that looks like. Again, nice and smooth and perfect, actually, because the uh, drill will rotate this perfectly around, spin it around, and then uh, that will uh, help you true up that edge. Now, the other thing is that this model comes with plastic axles. I wish I had metal ones. I suppose I could replace them with some brass rod or maybe some metal rod, steel, but uh, I don't have any, so I'll have to carefully cut these off and then scrape the seam lines down in here and glue one of them into one wheel you know one wheel side i'm trying to say and then uh, paint these all with the flat black or semi-gloss black actually and then uh, keep the one end free and uh, you know slide this on as i'm building the model so that's going to be a I don't know if it's a big challenge, but it's just sort of one of those irritants, I guess. But at any rate, it should look all right. So here's how I'm setting up the axles. I've got the one wheel end glued in onto the axle, and then I'm covering up the other end with some uh, masking tape. That's so that I can still glue in the other wheel and not have to scrape off the paint that's on that knurled end. And speaking of knurled ends, there it is there. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but there are some little bars sitting on there. There's also sink marks, which seem to go right up into the wheel, or right to the edge of that wheel. So, again, you can easily just mask that area just by putting some tape right about there, I think. Yeah, right about there. And just rolling this up. And of course, pinching that down. Then I can tape that onto one of those cardboard boxes again and have these sticking straight up. And the other thing is you might want to plug this hole here. And I do think this rod would actually do that pretty well. So I'll have to get some more of these rods and just stick them in there. Spray paint this and uh, then pull the rods out. And that whole center should be clear. So now I have another issue that I want to address before I actually paint my wheel backs. And as you can see, my tires went all frosty white in here. Now I don't know if that's like a, a bad bit of rubber, if this is going to happen again. I've had this happen in the past on some other things. So what I'm going to try to do is I've got one of these microfiber rags. Let's just see. Oh yeah, it wipes off pretty easily. 
although it's stuck in the lettering of the good boot. I think maybe if I just wash this with some water, it should be able to take most of it off of there. Again, you can see just how big and deep these tires are. So what I'll do is I'll grab one of these and just sort of see just how it fits in. It doesn't seem like that wheel back's going to push through at all. I know this is the front though. Look at, look at how deep that is. So the other part of that is the chrome outer of the wheel, which I'll have to uh, clip off and clean up. But those two together should just fit in perfectly like that and make up the difference for that thickness of that big huge tire. So again, we'll have to clean these. Yeah, I'll uh, try the microfiber rag. I'll also try soap and water, or maybe just water with the toothbrush, and clean these things up and make them look like they should. Here we have the components for making up our front and rear wheels. And what I have is the chrome outer wheel, the back wheel, and the tire itself. And here I've got the, for the rear, of course, the, back, the front wheel, the back, and those good boots. Now these ones are frosty, I have to clean them up, but what I noticed is they're a bit sticky inside here. And the more I'm thinking about this white powder, the more I'm thinking that this might be sort of a imbalance of that rubber material. So chemically speaking, there might be a little too much of something in here that's making it go frosty. And hopefully it's not a high sulfur content. Now here's the uh, the rear tire all cleaned up. And for the front tire, I've got to remove the uh, little button that's on here. That's from the uh, the parts tree. And I'm going to do that in the drill press again by and spin this end and hold the uh, sandpaper block to it until that becomes nice and clean. So what this is is a 7 16th chuck, or sorry, an impact socket kind of thing. Uh, whatever you call that. And I'll put the tire on there and then just hold this down and spin that. And another thing for the rear, I did see in one of the model magazines a long time ago that you could actually put some crazy glue in here on the rubber and then insert this end and... Uh, that will make this more of a solid tire and that's always good. The sad part is there is a little bit of a ridge on here and I can't get that off in the drill because I don't really have a way to hold this tire in here. Oh yeah, now if there's a high sulfur content, I have seen this on model kits in the past. Over time, your wheel backs will melt in here because the tire is always constantly hot and that's never a good sign. So hopefully the paint will act as a barrier between the rubber sulfite tire and the actual wheel back. Because I really don't want this, you know, pick it up off the shelf in five to ten years and the thing's all gooey and melted, melted the white styrene plastic, because that would be horrible. Uh, now another thing I could do is paint the good boot with uh, some flat acrylic white paint. And I can also paint this ridge on here red, make it look like one of those Hot Wheel wheels, maybe leave off painting the good boot part. But, you know, these are all kind of little decisions I can make just when the uh, model is being built. So what I'll do now is I will paint these and uh, continue to clean up the tire. I did that with um, just water and a toothbrush, no soap. Because again, sometimes the soap can actually go inside the rubber and start to deteriorate it as well. So again, you really want to be careful with this kind of stuff, or at least I want to be careful with this kind of stuff. So there's sort of a, a way to do it. Uh, one other quick thing before I paint this, what I did is I removed the chrome off the bottom here so that when I actually go to glue the end in, it's got that plastic to plastic contact. That way this will never come apart. Also, I scraped off around the edge here just with sandpaper laying it flat like this and going around and uh, that gives me a nice perfectly circular wheel because I notice that uh, it's actually really rough here on the chrome on this kit. So here's our big gigantic good boots and the little tires that go in front after I clean them up and glued in the back. Now there's that's with crazy glue and I'm pulling really hard here and the tires not separating 
So that worked, and that's good. The only problem was there's a little bit of a distortion. Hang on. There we go. A little bit of a distortion running around the outside rim on some of these tires. You can see it a little more predominantly on this one. But uh, the other thing I did was I took my big sandpaper block. This is a little one. And I sanded outward on that edge. Because remember I said there was like a seam line along there? So that's how I got rid of that. I also took my hobby blade and just went along the edge flat this way, if you know what I mean. So holding the blade like this and just getting rid of a little bit of that. And then I did take the little tires and I put them in the wheel spinner. And you can see the tread now is a lot better and uh, doesn't have the little bumps on there. So this is a perfectly machined tire, same as the big fat good boots on the back. So again, with just a little bit of work, I can uh, make these tires look great. Oh, let's try the hubcap in here. Or sorry, the wheel front. There we go. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Isn't that special? There we go. Yeah, so that's how it's going to look on the cars. Again, something really nice that I like. Next up, I have these extended front leaf springs for our gasser on this kit. And what I wanted to point out is there's the big hole for the axle on the top, and the bottom hole is actually for the shock absorber. And luckily, these rods are the same diameter as our axle. And you can see that it goes in through there pretty nicely in that hole. So I don't have to ream out the inside here. But what I do have to do is clip these off the parts tree. So I'm going to use my Zona side cutters here. And they easily will cut apart from one another. Easily. Easy! <laughs> and then, of course, there's on the bottom here. Just got to be careful not to cut that inappropriately. Okay, don't twist your parts, but I'm twisting mine. <laughs> All right, the other thing I need to do is these little pins here on the bottom is where this is going to attach onto our body. So I want to scrape the chrome off of here, and that's to ensure that good plastic to plastic contact. These chrome parts are molded on a black parts sprue. So once you see black in there, you uh, don't need to actually scrape any more. Or sorry, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that's when you know that you've removed the chrome is when you see the black plastic on there. Now, there are some mold marks on the back, but this is all chromed, and I don't think I'm going to attempt to remove them. I could. I could easily remove them and then just touch it up with some silver paint. But I don't know. I mean, this is not quite the serious group build, so... Papa Dan and uh, Colonel Reb said to have fun. So I don't know, is uh, removing all the mold marks fun? <laughs> anyway, I'll leave that up to you. So that's, uh, that's where I'm going with this. And uh, now let's see what I'm doing next. Next up would be these wheelie bars in the back. And again, I'm just going to clip those off. Or at least one of them anyway. And... Uh, so these are like casting or caster wheels in the back. And this is where the rubber tire would be right in there. So that would be painted with uh, flat black paint or maybe even semi-gloss. And then where it hooks up on the body, you'll notice there's a T in here. T for Trevor. And you want to, or at least I want to, scrape away all the... Uh, the chrome out of here. And that again is to ensure that good plastic to plastic contact stuff. Another thing I find helpful is, you see I'm handling this with my bare hands, I'm not wearing any gloves, so I do have this nice fine rag. This is actually microfiber cloth for your glasses, and what I do is just carefully rub off all the fingerprints with the microfabric, and there you can see it's all nice and clean. So I'm going to have to carefully put this into that body once that paint is dry on it. And again, we've got our mold marks in here. Now, you can remove these, put a little silver paint in there. But I think on this, I'm not going to be that particular. But I will, of course, paint the black rubber on there. And of course, the other units we have on this for our undercarriage are these exhaust headers. And these are the trumpets that go on the back. They'll glue there. 
and the shock absorbers. So I will cut these all out, clean them up, glue that together, paint them, and then show you what it looks like. I think what I'm going to do here is try to find flat white, because I like that flat white look on there. Shock absorbers, I'm not sure. Maybe a, a nice baby blue or a yellow or something like that. Um, maybe I'll, I'll search up some shock absorber manufacturers on the net and see what they show. I know in the 50s on the 57 Chevy these would be black, but I want them to pop out a little. All right, so here we got our wheel backs, and like I was saying, those little sticks made it so that I didn't have to try to drill a hole out in here or something like that. You can see there's no paint inside, so again, that's a good thing. And then here we've got our other wheels with the axle in there. And I bet if I take this off, if I can take it off, you'll see that it's still got the white there. So I can plug that into these wheels over here, and then we should be okay. So what I'll do is I'll put a bit of glue onto here, maybe scrape off some of that overspray, and then just push our tire right onto our wheel and glue that all together so it's nice and neat. So here we have our chassis just after painting, and I've added in some chrome rear leaf springs to match the front chrome up here. This is just the tester's silver paint. I have testers gloss black on our differential and rear axle, testers steel, flat steel on the little gas tank back here, and then Model Master, which is also testers. This is Chevy engine red. So this will look really neat once we get those good boots all in there and I get the shocks on and everything else. But for right now, this paint is just fresh, just finished painting it, so I'm going to let it dry. Aha! I noticed something about these wheels. You have to paint down inside here and here on the front one, that's on the back, because when you put on that chrome wheel, you can actually see through the slots in there into the white plastic. So make sure you paint them black or whatever color you need to blot them out. And there's what our wheel looks like when it's glued together with the black painted inside. You can see that all the little slots are blacked out just like it should be on the real car. Here's a rare shot of my actual workbench. This is where I can actually see what I'm building. So these wheelie bars are only held in at the back, and what I'm doing to make them level on both sides is I've got this old tube of Crazy Glue. This is the actual container the Crazy Glue sits in, and I've got a, a bottle of paint here just to stop this from rolling back, and I've rolled it up underneath the two wheelie bar wheels just so that they will be parallel once uh, the glue dries. And then here I added on the good boot tires. I don't have the front axles on yet because I had to paint the shock absorbers and I do have the uh, exhaust manifolds painted. I've just got to scrape the paint off of here, scrape the paint in the holes and everywhere and then I'll be able to glue on that front end. I also have to scrape the little bit in front here where the radiator goes but that'll be a little bit later on too. So here's what the chassis looks like with the paint scraped out of the way. You want to do this if you're using the testers liquid glue or any kind of glue like that, and that is so that you get that plastic to plastic contact. Now what I wanted to show you is how I come about getting these nice little squares on here. So first off I use my reaming tool and I just ream out the holes to get the paint out of there. And then what I would do is, let's see, the spring has to actually be sprung into the hole. Let's see if I can get this. Hmm. Oops, anyway, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Come on. There it is. Okay, so what I do is, uh, let's say this is still painted and I haven't scraped yet. I will take my number 16 hobby blade and just turn it upside down and carefully trace around here with just enough pressure to make a little line in there, and then I can remove the springs and actually scrape around that little line. And the other nice part is right here on the chassis, you will see a little bar right there. Yeah, you can see that pretty nicely. So that's an indication of where the headers are going to go in. So if you just scrape behind the bar, you should be able to get that in without actually showing white plastic in here. So now what I'm going to do is glue all this together with the shock absorbers, and then I'll show you what it looks like. While you're waiting on that to glue up, I thought I'd show you this. I found this in my uh, little collection of things. 
I got this a long time ago at a car show, and I want to paint it on my 1951 Studebaker. I think that would uh, really look nice. So what this is, is a Little Daddy Roth's Flake, Beatnik Purple. These are actually that nice coarse grade metallic flake that used to be on like, well, I remember it as a kid back in the early 80s, late 70s. And this is the stuff that they used to have on all the bumper cars back in the day. And I've seen this. This is even earlier. This is thick flake metallic. And they put this on a lot of the cars from the 60s. But just look at how big that is and how sparkly it is. So what you're supposed to do is you paint your car black or something like that, flat black. And then you mix this stuff into a clear coat and you blast it over the entire car and uh, let that dry. And maybe do that maybe once or twice and then load on just clear coat without the flake inside it. And you can see on the lid, sort of that's the effect there. I mean, that's some really cool stuff, but I think this flake is way too big for a model car. So sadly, I can't use that. But there are some purples out there in scale that have a flake like this. So I thought you guys would just enjoy that because it's sort of that Ed Big Daddy Roth, although this is Little Daddy. So I think it's his son. But anyway, it's it's in that kind of vein. And here's our chassis all finished. Cowabunga, dudes! All right, so what I did is I added a little bit of the uh, chrome silver paint onto the top of our chrome springs here. I also added in the white headers. I painted inside the holes with the uh, rubber color from Testers. And then I added in a little chrome silver back here and the black for the rubber wheels. I didn't want to use that rubber there because that's brown so it would look kind of wrong but at any rate I also got the radiator on here and all the wheels actually rotate which is nice one thing about this with the front end the way the wheels are situated actually will line up and make this go parallel or you know straight up and down whatever you want to call it and uh, again the shock absorbers help as well another thing I did was I added in a little bit of silver paint uh, you can't see it, <laughs> but where the shock absorbers mount into the spring on the little end. Overall, this is quite nice. The uh, good boot wheels actually spin. So this is what it looks like from the top down <laughs> instead of the bottom up. So what I'll do is I will get uh, Ron. I'll work on Ron next. Ron is the driver for this, according to the cartoon instructions inside. And uh, I'll get him all done up and then I still don't really know what color to paint the body and all of that stuff so whoops so hopefully uh, I can get some suggestions here what color would you paint it if it was yours let me know in the comment section down below are you having fun with your group build well I sure hope you're building as well and that you enjoy my videos here on the monster hobbies model car garage channel now, every year, we also run our own contest. It's called the Monster Hobbies Build a Monster Contest. And we have a category that's right up your alley if you're doing this cartoon group build. It's called Totally Wild. And what it is, is of course, all these kind of cars. And uh, the Go Mad Nomad, any of that cartoon crazy stuff, Dave Deal stuff. Um, of course, Ed Big Daddy Roth with the big ah, monster cars with the shifters up there. And if you're interested in that kind of contest and everything, check out this video right here and it'll take you directly to it. And if you want to see more continuation of our build, check out this video down here. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. <laughs>